In difficult days and facing dire circumstances, it is always good to remind ourselves that God is greater than all. Scott Pauley is examining the miracles of Jesus recorded for us in God's Word. Our hope is that the message in these miracles will become real in your life. Christ is enough. Let's open our Bibles and join the study now. There's only one person that's ever lived on this earth that did all things well. Maybe you do something well. Maybe you feel like you do nothing well. But there was one person that the Bible tells us did all things well, and that was the Lord Jesus Christ. And we come to that word today in Mark chapter number 7, a miracle that only Mark records for us. Mark is my favorite gospel writer. Remember, this is the gospel of action. And so Mark provides striking details about these miracles for us. And this particular miracle, the the healing of the deaf and the dumb man, is recorded only by Mark in Mark chapter number 7. Beginning in verse 31, we read, And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came unto the Sea of Galilee, through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf, and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude, and put his fingers into his ears. And he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed, and saith unto him, Epaphtha, that is, be opened. And straightway his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plain. And he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much the more a great deal they published it, and were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. What a pitiful picture in this man is found because here is a man that in that culture would have been utterly an outcast. He cannot hear, so it's nearly impossible for anyone to communicate with the man. And then because of this, he cannot speak well. He cannot articulate. The wording here implies that perhaps He wasn't born deaf, so he could speak, but he couldn't articulate. He had an impediment in his speech, and so he's not understandable. I mean, this is a man who needs the Lord. Aren't you glad at that very moment Jesus comes through town? I love the fact he's been with many people, multitudes of people in the context in the previous verses, and yet he has time for one. Aren't you glad the Lord has time for one? And he has time for one that others do not have time for. What do we learn about our Lord Jesus From Mark chapter 7, this one who does all things well. Well, first of all, notice Christ's tenderness with this man. You know, we're living in a very harsh world, a hard world. Sin hardens a man. Uh, But the Lord is tender. Uh, We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. He really is the man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He weeps over us. He weeps with us. There is a certain divine sympathy that Christ exhibits here that I think is beautiful, and it's encouraging for all of us. And notice his, his tenderness. First, he takes him aside from the multitude. He gets him away from the crowd. He's not going to make this man a spectacle. This man's not a sideshow for the Lord. Religion can make a show out of a man, but Jesus doesn't do that. He dealt with him as an individual. What tenderness. And then I love the fact that even in his tone, even as he speaks to the man, uh, there is compassion. The Bible says in verse 34, he sighed. Have you ever wondered why Jesus sighed? Uh, Was he weary from his journey? I don't think that was it. I think he was weary of what sin had done in this world. I think he was burdened and broken and grieving for the same reason that he wept standing in a cemetery when mourners were wailing all around him because the Creator knew this was not the world that he created. This was what sin created. Uh, This was the the deconstruction uh, that had come because of the fall of man. And there is this beautiful tenderness where our Lord connects with this individual. And praise God, he connects with us. Then, not only do you see his tenderness you see his touch. 
Now, now notice this carefully. There's a little play on words here. These people, in verse 32, beseeched him to put his hand upon him. Now, he's going to do that. He's going to, he's going to touch him, but that's not all he's going to touch. No, our Lord Jesus, I love this, not only touches the man, he touches heaven. His touch reaches both directions. That's why Christ came, to connect God and man. Look at him on that cross. In one hand, he takes a holy, righteous God, and in the other hand, sinful, fallen humanity. He touches both heaven and earth. In his prayer, he touches heaven. The Bible says, looking up to heaven. So he's praying. But then he looks to the man. And the Bible says he put his fingers in his ears. He spit and touched his tongue. He touches the man. Isn't this beautiful? He touched the Father, and he touched this deaf and dumb man. Friends, that's what Jesus is doing today. He is our advocate, our mediator, our go-between, our intercessor. Uh, He touches the Father for us, and he touches us for the Father. By the way, that touch was powerful. That touch was sufficient. That touch was miraculous. Yes, Christ is enough. The moment he touched this man and simply said this word, this Aramaic word is given here, apaphtha, be opened. The Bible says straightway. His ears were open. I mean, immediately. And the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plain. So immediately the man can hear, and the man can speak plain. Only the Lord can do that. Only the Lord can touch someone that way. So we have Christ's tenderness. We have Christ's touch. But then here's Christ's testimony. And it was not a testimony he gave about himself. In fact, he tried to to stifle some of the uh, spectacular, if you will, But this was the testimony that the multitudes gave of him. In verse 37, they were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done, here it is, all things well. Friends, I want to say to you today, uh, none of us do all things well, and most of us are doing most things poorly. And we're living in a world that is marked by brokenness, a sin-cursed world, fallen humanity, just like the world that Jesus was looking at was touched by, and the world he touched. That's the world we're living in. And yet in the midst of that, Christ came with his divine sufficiency, with his his power, with his perfect knowledge. Yes, Christ is enough. He hath done all things well. And I want to tell you that every person listening to me today and the man speaking to you right now, we all need one thing. We need Christ. We just need Christ because Christ is enough. In fact, the last word here they speak, he hath done all things well. That word well is the same word for the word beautiful. He does everything beautifully. Do you remember what Solomon wrote in the Old Testament? God makes all things, what? Beautiful in his time. (laughs) Do you remember? God created the world with just a word, light. And there was light and it was what? It was very good. God created everything with his word, and then the world responds to his word and says it's all perfect, it's all very good, it's all well, it's all beautiful. May I say to you today, if you'll allow the Lord to speak to you, to work in your life, he will do what you cannot do and no one else can do for you. He will make all things well. In his time, he will make everything beautiful. This is the beautiful work of Christ his tenderness with man, with fallen, undeserving sinners, his touch, his touch of heaven and his touch on earth. And then praise God, this testimony. Can you say it today? Tell somebody, he hath done all things well. Christ is enough. What an encouragement to know that regardless of the situation, we can trust the Lord Jesus. You can find a Bible reading schedule through the Miracles of Jesus and many additional study resources at enjoyingthejourney.org. Visit us online today and let us know that you're listening. We are very grateful that you're making this journey with us through God's Word. Until next time, remember this, Christ is enough.